Mexico with us. Very nice. Okay, and I also wanted to welcome Alejandro. Hi, Alejandro. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Cool. Nice to see you. Um, can you introduce yourself also for the class? Uh, introduce myself? Yeah, you can tell us where you live and where you work. Uh, my name is Alejandro. I live in Barcelona. I'm married. I'm 44. I'm unemployed. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, great job. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice introduction. Good job. So Adela is also from Spain. So it's nice we have a couple of students from Spain today. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> OK, we have also German with us. Hi, German. It's nice to see you. Hi, teacher. Thank you. Hey, can you tell the class where you're from also? Yes, I'm from Mexico. Uh, I'm studying English now. OK, perfect. Nice job, German. I'm happy that you were able to come to class today, too. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. <laughs> no problem. It's nice to see you. Um, Omar, how are you doing today? Hello, teacher. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Very good. Um, and Omar, can you tell the class also where you live? Yeah, I'm from Egypt. I, I'm, I'm a communications and electronics engineer. Okay, perfect. Great job. It's nice to see you also again, Omar. Thanks for coming to class. Nice to see you as well. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, and we also have a new student. I haven't met him before. Hi, Sven. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Fine, thanks. Cool. Um, can you introduce yourself to me and the class? Can you tell us all where you're from? <laughs> I'm from Germany, living in the rural area, the former uh, industrial area in Germany. Uh, and I'm working as a software engineer. Um, and the quality assurance management of a big software company. Cool, that's awesome. Very nice. My brother used to live in Germany. Um, he just moved back to Florida, but he was living in Stuttgart. <laughs> yeah, it's around about two hours from here. Okay, that's awesome. Very cool. I've never been to Germany, but it would be fun to visit maybe in the future. I have some friends who are from there. Okay, nice to meet you, Sven. <laughs> All right, so I think we can get started with our class, you guys. I'm going to try to share my screen with you so you can see. There we go. All right, so you can see the lesson. Can you guys see this here? OK, it looks like you can. OK, maybe I can ask Adela to read the title of the class. It's in English. Very good. Nice pronunciation. Um, so we can get started with our introduction. So we kind of already told everyone about where we live and where we work. So maybe everyone can like tell a little story or like describe their favorite pet that they've had. Um, in the past. For example, my favorite pet that I've had was a Siberian Husky. It's a kind of dog. I'll write it here in the chat box. And his name was Lupo. He was a really nice dog. He was my favorite. So Adela, maybe you can go first. Can you tell us about your favorite pet? Sorry, uh, I don't have any fa favorite uh, pet in this moment. I don't have any pet, uh, but uh, uh, five years ago I have uh, diamonds, the little birds, tropical birds. I think I don't have any exactly favorite pet. Okay, that's that's really cool, and um. 
what kind of tropical birds were they? Were they love birds? Eh, bon birds is the name in Spanish. Uh, this is uh, with the. Uh, pretty. I don't think I've seen that kind of bird before. Um, but maybe you could write the name like in the chat box. I think it's on the side. You can write it in the chat box. And we can maybe Google it or something. But yeah, birds are really nice pets. They're very interesting. They're very intelligent. That's a good choice. <laughs> okay, Alejandro, I wanted to ask you about your favorite pet. Can you tell us about the favorite pet that you've had in the past or one that you'd like to have in the future? Um, I like I like the dogs dogs but uh, I'm against pets. I think oh. <laughs> they have to live uh, in free. Uh-huh. You could say they need their freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so what kind of dogs do you like? Uh, uh, I had a pit bull in the past. Oh, I love pit bulls. Cool. Yes, but my sister... Uh, 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 now uh, my pit bull live in my sister's house. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, you could say he lives with my sister now. Mm. Very good. Um, that's really nice. Pit bulls are so smart, and they can be very sweet animals too. Very cool. Nice. Okay. okay, so thank you for sharing about your pit bull. Okay, so we have some little tropical birds, and we also have pit bulls on our list of favorite things. So let's ask Amaudi next. Amaudi, tell us about yes, your favorite sir. pet. Uh, my, fav my favorite pet is a dog. I have two dogs. Um, the kind of my dog is Blue Healer, do you know? Yeah, Blue Healer, yeah. Yes, uh, right now uh, um, they are sleeping next to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's cool. I heard that they're very smart. Are they well trained? Uh, um, yes, the male is trained, but, but the female is very lazy to learn something. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's a good uh, adjective to use, lazy. Yes, my, my dogs, when I give any co comments, uh, uh, sit down, it's okay, or give me a ball, it's okay, or uh, run, it's okay, but uh, when I need to give uh, some food, it's difficult to control them. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, maybe they just get too excited. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and it looks like Adela is trying to show us her screen, so let's look at it. Oh, they're cool. I think in English those are called finches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really pretty. 
Thank you, Adela, for showing us that. That's cool. Yeah, so in English, those are called finches. And sometimes mm -hmm. you could, there are like, there's one type of finch, it's called a zebra finch. So the picture that you showed me kind of looked like a zebra finch. But they have different kinds. Thank you. They're very cool. Thanks for showing us. Okay, Jernman, it's your turn. <laughs> Jernman, can you tell us about your favorite animal? Yes, or your favorite turn. pets? Yes. Um, uh, nowadays, I don't have a favorite one, but uh, I used to, to have a, a dog, and her, her was a, a husky Alaskan. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you know what this was? Yeah, husky? she was an Alaskan husky, you could say. Yes, and um, but uh, we, uh, she. Oh, sorry, I heard some noise uh, from somebody. Okay, um, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Go ahead. And she, she, is a, she. I, I, I have to, to, to give my dog to another person because I have a small, uh, a small, uh, place. Ah, oh, that's Mom. sad. Yes, and she, she, had to run a, a lot because it's a big, it's a big dog. Yeah, huskies love running too. Yes. Ours used to run away all the time. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I love huskies. I think that they're my favorite too. Very nice. <laughs> okay, um, I think it's Omar's turn next. And Omar, I'm going to your microphone here. Okay, so Omar, tell us about your favorite, um, your favorite pet. I used to have a little turtle when I was young. A it turtle? Was, yeah, small turtle. Yeah. That's so cute. What was his name? I didn't like give him a name actually. <laughs> Okay, it, so it belongs to my young sister, actually. But I okay. died a few, yeah, a few years ago, unfortunately. Oh. Do you know what kind of turtle it was? Nope. What color was it? It's like any normal turtle. Do you, was it green? <laughs> or brown? Brown, yeah, brown, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I think we're going to learn a little bit about tortoises in the class today. Um, but those are maybe a different kind of turtle than your sister had. Did it live in the water or did it live on the land? No, on the land, yeah, on the land only. Oh, was it big? No. <laughs> it was very small. Okay. It might not have been a tortoise then. Tortoises, they... They generally live on the land, but they're they grow pretty big. <laughs> so maybe it was just a turtle. Okay, it could have been maybe a box turtle. Those are a kind that we have in the United States. But I'm not sure what kind of turtles you guys have in Egypt. Um, but thank you so much. That's a good a good pet. I think we have a nice diversity of pets here. <laughs> Very cool. And Sven, I wanted to ask you the same question about your favorite pet that you've had or that you would like to have in the future. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I have not the time for a pet at the moment. I mm -hmm. used to have a cat and I would love to get another one um, because I think cats are great fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also have had a snake and a spider <laughs> when I lived cool. with some friends um, as a student here. I must say the snake was kind of fun, uh, but the spider was the most boring 
pet you can ever have. It they are. It's <laughs> yeah, really, they don't do anything. And uh, once uh, every month, they uh, want to eat something and uh, move for about a minute or so. And uh, then they are quite lazy and do have, don't do anything. <laughs> I not um, to act. Yeah, I actually I used to have snakes and spiders too. I grew up with an older brother, so we always had all different kinds of pets. But um, what kind of spider did you have? Uh, I guess it's a bird spider in English. A black spider? Bird, bird eating spider, tarantula. Oh, sure uh, oh, those are big. A, yeah, yeah, such a big spider and. Uh, wow. Very lazy. Yeah. A bird eating tarantula. Yeah, that's like one of the biggest kinds of tarantulas, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. It was kind of big. <laughs> At least that kind of thing. Yeah, they grow really big. The kind of tarantula that I had, I had a rose hair. And also, they're, they're like brown and they have them also in Mexico. So maybe a Maori and German have seen them before. <laughs> Um, but then I also had a pink toad tarantula, which was so cute. It had it was black, but it had like little pink feet. It was adorable. I loved it. <laughs> Never seen this one. <laughs> they live though in the trees, so it was. Um, it had like in its terrarium, it had a little tree, so it would live up inside the tree. And but the were rose they hair one. Um. The pink toad tarantula was active, but the other one, the rose hair, was pretty lazy. Like if you took her out, she would just like sit on your hand. She wouldn't even want. To, she'd like walk a little bit and just sit there. Yeah, <laughs> they don't the do very much. <laughs> they're lazy, but they're nice pets because they don't require a lot of attention if you don't have a lot of time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys all did such a nice job there. I'm impressed with everybody's um, descriptions of their favorite animals. That was really cool. I'm going to share the screen again um, so we can like go over some... Oh, I thought I shared it. Hold on. <laughs> so we can go over some vocabulary words. There we go. Okay. So I wanted to just, these are like general vocabulary words that you would see maybe in a pet store or if you're doing research about adopting a new pet. So um, maybe I can ask Adela to read the first two words for us. A terrarium and aquarium. Very good. Terrarium and aquarium. Very nice. Great job. Okay, Al Maori, can you read the next one? Uh, Heatland. Yes, very good. And maybe you can read the next one also. Habitat. Habitat. Great job. Okay, Alejandro, can you read the next word? Veterinarian. Okay, groomer. very nice. Yeah, veterinarian and groomer. Very good. <laughs> good job. Um, Omar, maybe you can read the next one. Book park. Okay, and I skipped German. German, can you read this one here? Cat tree. Cat tree. And Sven, um, uh, maybe you can tell us something that you had in your terrarium for your tarantula. What was something that you had? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> we have um, um, stones and um, a little plant was there, but uh, the main thing was, I'm not sure how it's called, um, gravel or something like this. Where gravel? I yeah, I guess. I'm not sure. Okay, there's something else. If Was the gravel made of stone or wood? Yeah, mainly it was wood. Okay, very good. Well, this would be called mulch. Okay. Mulch. Yeah, we had mulch in our terrarium also. Okay, so maybe I could ask Adela to tell us the difference between a terrarium and an aquarium. Terrarium is for uh, um, animals living on the earth, 
and aquarium is for aquatic, uh, in aquatic uh, live in aquatic habitats. habitats. Very good, perfect, great job. Um, so an aquarium would be used for um, aquatic animals, like you said, so it would have water in it, and then the terrarium would always have earth or mulch, maybe dirt. <laughs> Very good, nice job, Adela. And uh, aquarium, sorry, oh, go ahead. aquarium can, can be uh, uh, continental water or sea water, no? Uh, can be uh, two different uh, types, no? But for the animals living on the sea or on the river. Exactly. Great job. Yeah, that's a very good point. So you can have a freshwater aquarium or a saltwater aquarium. Nice job. Uh, excellent. Very good, Adela. <laughs> Okay, um, Al Maudi, maybe you can tell me an animal that would need a heat lamp to live. Um, heat lamp uh, need the light to live or something like that. Uh huh. Yeah. What kind of animal needs a heat lamp to live? Yeah. Uh, the flower. I don't know. Uh, no. The <laughs> yeah, some some plants could use heat lamps. Some that's right. Plants, uh, but are there animals, some? I think uh, at all, uh, all animals need the light to live. I think. Mhm. Mm yeah. Very good. Um, they use um some lamps though for uh just for the heat because some animals need. Um, a warm environment to live. So if it's too cold, then they will die. So can you think of maybe one animal that would need a heat lamp or need to be warm to live? Uh, uh, for example, penguin needs a cold environment, habitat. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I don't know animals need a um, heat lamp. Okay, yeah, no problem. No, I, I, I don't have anyone in my mind right now. <laughs> That's okay. No, I, I like your example of a cold habitat animal, the penguin. That's perfect. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, let's ask Alejandro if he can think of any other animals that might need a heat lamp. What do you think, Alejandro? Uh... I don't know. Oh, okay, that's no problem. Um, maybe Sven, because you said that you had some reptiles before. Could you give us an example, maybe, of something that could need a heat lamp? Yeah, a snake obviously needs a heat lamp because if it gets too cold, uh, the snakes doesn't move anymore. And this okay. was our trick to get it back in the terrarium. If it don't want to get back. <laughs> We just opened the door and uh, it gets a little bit cooler and then the snake was very lazy and you can catch it up. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> wow. I always lived like in Florida so it wasn't cold where I lived. So when the snakes got away, we they were a little bit hard to catch. <laughs> But that's good if you could if you're in Germany and it's cold and they can't get away. So yeah, so snakes, um, like all kinds of reptiles, they all need to have a heat lamp. So also like iguanas or lizards, uh, they all need to have a heat lamp. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Adela. No, uh, chameleon. Chameleon. Aha! Uh -huh, yeah, chameleon. I think I spelled that wrong. <laughs> okay, yeah, very good, Adela. Thank you so much for that example, too. Okay, um, German, maybe you can tell me the habitat of an Alaskan husky, of your favorite kind of dog. It's a cool, cool, no. Yeah, very good. Perfect. So uh, they have a cold weather habitat. Cold weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job. Perfect. Okay, Omar, um, can you tell me um, the job of a veterinarian?
or the definition maybe of veterinarian? Oh, I think we lost Omar. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Omar, I hope you can come back to class if I see you. Um, okay, Amaudi, maybe you can tell us the definition of a veterinarian. Um, a veterinarian is, uh, for example, my dogs are sick. I needed to uh, bring a medicine or something like that. So I need a veterinarian to care my dogs. Yeah, perfect. Very good. So it's just kind of like an animal doctor. Great yes, job. Yes, animal doctor. Perfect. I like the sentence that you gave as an example. That was great. Very good job. Um, maybe I could ask Adela for um, the definition of a groomer. I don't have exactly the, the definition about a groomer. Um, oh, okay. I think it's uh, related uh, with uh, um, a place uh, you um, uh, clean, no, the, the pet or, mm -hmm, or yeah. hair, no, cut your hair. is same to a hairdresser in, for for people, I think. But uh, I don't know exactly, sorry. Yeah, exactly. No, that was a great definition. So a groomer is a professional who cleans or trims the fur of your pet. Um, so if you say, like if you have a poodle, you could say, I'm going to take him to the groomer to get trimmed or to get his hair cut. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, Alejandro, um, can you tell us what a dog park is? I think it's a place where dogs have their necessities. Okay, yeah, very good. So a park where dogs can go and play with each other. It's called a dog park. So usually it has a large fenced-in area, and the dogs can all run around together and have fun. It's really cool. Um, Jedman, I'm going to ask you about this one. I'm not sure if this is a very um, common phrase, but do you know what a cat tree is? Yes. Oh, okay. Tell us, what is a cat tree? It's uh, like a kind of... Uh a house for a cat that uh, it's, uh, it has several um, floors and the cat can go up uh, and step by step and for, for playing just for fun. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Very good. So it's a place that the cat can like climb and play. Very, very nice. Perfect. Um, well, it looks like you guys have a nice understanding of these vocabulary words. You all did really well. Um, so we're going to look at some of the most common pets, at least in the United States. Um, and you guys can afterwards maybe tell me about some of pets that are common in your country. Um, so maybe I could ask Adela to tell us which, um, which picture matches with the word number one. Uh, number one, I think, is a uh, uh, tortoise. Uh, oh no, sorry, uh, it's a. <laughs> I, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, you, oh, sorry. Yes, a is number six. <laughs> I I I brought the the order. So. No, it's fine. It's perfect. Yeah. So this is an example of a tortoise. It's a kind of turtle that grows very large and uh, lives for a long time, and they live on the earth. Very good. Great job. Um, Amaudi, would you like to tell us which word matches with picture B? B cat, uh, Persian cat? 
Yeah, very good. So Persian cats are really fluffy. They have a lot of fur. <laughs> so that's an example of a Persian cat. Very nice. Um, Alejandro, can you tell us which one matches with picture C? C? Sí. Mm, huh? uh, mm. Golden Retriever? Uh, that's really close. Um, try one more time. There's. Um, try to notice uh, that this man here, he's blind. So this is a special kind of dog to help him. German Shepherd. That's also very close. Try one more time. <laughs> okay. No. It's the, I it's, don't know. Yeah, it's the kind of dog that the, um, it helps a blind person yeah. because they can't see. So yeah. the dog helps them to, to know where to go. He, he's like a guide dog. Or there's another word for uh, it. Number five. Yeah, perfect. Number five. Seeing eye dog. Exactly. Great job. Very, very good. Um, so these these dogs are they could be called guide dogs or seeing eye dogs, and they are or service dogs even, um, and they're always used to help people with disabilities maybe that they can't see. Great job, Alejandro. Thank you. Okay, German, it's your turn for letter D. Which one matches letter D? Siamese cat. Good job. And can you say that for me one more time? Siamese. Siamese. Yeah, good job. All right, Sven, it's your turn. Can you try uh, letter E? Mm, I think it's German Shepherd. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Good job. Okay, Adela, can you try letter F? Um, I don't see very well, but it's... Uh, uh, African Grey Parrot. Yeah, very, very good. And do they have African Grey Parrots uh, where you live in Spain? No. Um, they are, um, I don't see any anyone, uh, this animal. They are other parrots, but uh, green, uh, yellow, uh, with colors, but the grey is not. Okay. Uh, well, this is one of the most popular parrots um, in the United States because it's very, very intelligent. Um, it's one of the smartest birds, they say. <laughs> so, um, so that's a new bird to, to learn about in English, the African gray parrot. Very nice, Adela. Okay, Amaury, it's your turn for letter G. Uh, letter G, number nine, Tarantula. Very good. And try to say that for me one more time. Tarantula. 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 Okay. Good job. Very good. <laughs> and do they have these kinds of tarantulas in Mexico? Um, no, but uh, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, tarantulas here. Okay. Well, this <laughs> looks like a rose hair tarantula. So this is, I had one of these one time. <laughs> And she lived forever. She lived for like eight years. She lived for a really long time. Okay. Um, oh I think, Alejandro, it's your turn for the next one. Maybe you can try letter H. H. Uh. It's a hamster. Yeah, perfect. Great job. Okay, Germán, it's your turn for letter I. Here. Okay, it's um, um, I don't remember. I think it's a koi. This one, the f the little fluffy animal. It's not a koi, but you could try again. Mm, I don't know, a ferret or. Yeah, very good, a ferret. 
Yeah, so do they have um, ferrets as pets in Mexico? Yes, actually, um, I had a friend in, uh, who has uh, one of this. Okay, cool. Yes. Very nice. They're cute animals. They they remind me of cats a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but they are more large. Yeah, yeah. And they smell bad, too. <laughs> they have a bad smell. But they're very cute. I like them. <laughs> okay, um, maybe I could ask Sven to try letter J. Uh, it's a boa constrictor. Yeah, perfect. Great job. Um, Adela, can you try letter K? I think it's a guinea pig. Um, it's not a guinea pig, but it's another one. Try one more time. This is a, a kind of fish that's very popular in Japan. I I don't see. Sorry. I Oh, you can't see it? I'm sorry. Do you want me to make it bigger? I can I can increase the uh, I think it's a koi, no? Yeah, exactly. Because Very good. It's if it's you, a koi. If you talk about Japan, it's normal the koi. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, Adela. Very good. Um, okay, I'm out each try letter L. Uh, letter L is eight. Number eight. Okay, and can you pronounce it for us? Iguana. Yeah, good job, Iguana. Great work. Iguana. 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 Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Okay, Thank Alejandro, you. try the last one, letter M. <coughs> M. Uh, golden Retriever. Yeah, very good. Perfect. Great job. So there is one. I, I just wrote this lesson yesterday, so I forgot to put the picture of a guinea pig. So I will... Google a guinea pig so you guys can see what it is. Can you guys see this picture here? This is a guinea pig. It's kind of like a hamster, but it's bigger. So that's an example of a guinea pig. <laughs> but you guys did a great job there. So these are some of the most common pets in the United States. And we can go ahead and move on. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to tell me. Um, but we're going to practice um, a new idiom here. And maybe I could ask Sven to read the idiom and the example for us. To work like a dog, meaning to work very hard. Example, the boy worked like a dog on a school project. Very good. Great job. Perfect. Um, I'm trying to zoom out a little bit. Sorry, because it, I made it big for the other activity. All right, that's too small. <laughs> All right, so um, I'd like you guys to try to use this idiom in a sentence um, to work like a dog. So um, Sven, maybe you can give us an example of how we might be able to use that in a sentence. Um, well, um, during my graduation I have to work like a dog uh, to get my exam. <laughs> okay, excellent. Great example. Perfect. Okay, what about you, German? Can you try to use that idiom in a sentence? Yes. Um, the um, those constructions work workers are working like a dog. Perfect. Very good. <laughs> Great job. Yeah, construction work is very hard. They would have to work like dogs. <laughs> 
Okay, Alejandro, it's your turn. Can you tell us a sentence using this idiom? <clears throat> okay. My wife makes me to work like a dog. <laughs> Great example. Very good. So you could say, my wife makes me work like a dog. Very good. Excellent job. That's a funny one, too. <laughs> Okay, Amaudi, it's your turn. Can you try to give us an example too? Okay, um, I have a little activities to do and uh, I needed to give a presentation in my job. So my boss uh, makes me work like a doggy all the time. <laughs> Excellent job. That's another good example. Very good. All right, Adela, it's your turn. Oh, Adela, can you think of how we can use that in a sentence? Okay. I don't like uh, work like a dog because I work uh, for life <laughs> and don't like for work. Okay, very good. I like how you use that phrase too, that you work to live but you don't live to work. Very good. Great job, you guys. Perfect. Alright, so it looks like you have a nice understanding of this idiom. So in our review, I'm going to ask you guys again um, to maybe give another example. Uh, but you did all very, very well. Um, demonstrating your understanding there. So here I'd like you guys to give me your opinion um, on this subject about having wild animals as pets. So um, maybe I could ask Alejandro to read um, this first paragraph for us. <coughs> okay. In many countries it has become a fat to have wild animals as pets. For example, some people breed wolves with dogs and sell them as exotic pets. Others attempt to tame animals such as foxes, monkeys, or even wallabies. wallabies. <laughs> Great job. Very good. Um, so this leads to some questions here on the bottom. Um, Amaudi, can you read these questions for us? Yes, teacher. Uh, what are your thoughts on this practice? Is it a good idea for the owners? Would the animals be happy? Have you had a wild animal as a pet before? Great job. I like your question intonation there too. Excellent reading. Okay, so I wanted to ask Adela's opinion first about this topic. Um, can you tell me what you think about having wild animals as pets, Adela? And uh, the wild animals are uh, another animals uh, in extinction uh, problem. I think uh, uh, they need uh, more control than this moment exists, uh, more regulation. Okay, I agree. Yeah, if some animals are endangered, then if people are having them as pets, it might cause further damage to the species. Very interesting. Nice job, Adela. Um, what do you think about it, German? Uh, about uh, having dog, uh, having wild animals as a pet? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think uh, we should respect the, the the minds of the other people to have uh, this kind of 
animals in, in at home, but mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it has it has to be uh, observed by the by I don't know some uh, people because uh, if you have uh, children at home, it can be be dangerous or hazard for them. Yeah, that's true. It could be dangerous. Um, but I like how you said in the beginning that it's important to maybe respect other people's opinions about it too. So if someone else decides that they want to have a monkey, <laughs> maybe, you know, if they take good care of it, then maybe it's okay. Very good, mm -hmm. Jinman. Nice job. Okay. Uh, Sven, I wanted to ask you what you thought about this too. Uh, I guess at no, at not endangered species, it's quite okay. Um, but just because it's a wild animal doesn't mean that it must be uh, or must have an unhappy life just because it's a pet. And if never people would do this, we won't have any pets at all, I guess, because any animal was once a wild animal before coming a pet. So I guess it's okay, but it highly depends on the circumstances the animals have to live under. Yeah, I think I agree with you. It's so interesting to hear everyone's different points of view. This is fun. <laughs> Great job, Sven. I like how you were able to express your opinion there. Very good. Um, so, so do you think that it would be a good idea for the owners or that the animals would be happy? I know you said it depends on the circumstances. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, I've uh, seen in a TV show someone who had uh, wild cats, big cats, I'm not sure how they're called in English, and mm -hmm. uh, what he wasn't aware of that this changed his whole life, because these animals uh, have to have much attention, and uh, if you do something like this, you should think about it, um, how much time and how much effort it really means to have a wild animal because they have other needs and are not so well integrated like pets, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. I think that you have to take all of that into consideration before you make that decision. And so um, in English those are called big cats. Okay, thanks. Big cats, yeah. <laughs> very nice job. Okay, Alejandro, I wanted to ask you about this too. What is your opinion about having wild animals as pets? Uh, I'm against a wild animal as a pet. <coughs> totally. <laughs> I okay. Think, uh, the animals uh, 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 they they have lived in the forest and in a house it's a very bad uh, place. Yeah, I agree. So so if they're used to living in the forest, then to take them and put them in your house, then that would be a, a really bad idea. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, um, yes, I think, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it would be very difficult for the animals to adjust if they had grown up in the forest. Very nice. Good job, Alejandro. Thank you for telling us your opinion, too. Very good. <laughs> okay, Amaudi, I want to ask you your opinion, too. What do you think about having wild animals as pets? Uh, in my opinion, it's a bad action because it, the wild animals needed to a uh, big environment, a yeah, big forest, box, 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 or something like that. Uh, if you need, if, if you want uh, wild, wild animals, you need to use your force to with that animal. 
So, in my opinion, it's not a good option uh, to take as a pet. Okay, nice job. I like how you were able to express your ideas there too. And you said like forests or bosques. And I think like you're referring to the word in Spanish like bosque, which is like the word for forests. Forest, um, so forest, so yeah. you could say like, um, oh, here, I'll write it here on the screen. You could say the woods or the forests. The woods. Oh yeah, I forgot that the word teacher. Woods. Yeah, yeah. Woods. So those are two different words that they're synonymous. They mean the same thing. Oh, okay. um, but you could yeah, you could use either of those. The woods or the forest. <laughs> okay, that's great. All right. Well, you guys all did a really nice job. I like um, how you were all able to express your opinions very clearly. You guys all did very well. Okay. So we just have like a few minutes left, so I wanted to practice this phrasal verb, to run away. And uh, German, who used to have a husky, he probably knows a little bit about to, about animals running away. Um, so German, maybe you could read this, um, this phrasal verb, f verb for us and the definition. Oh, German, are you there? Oh, we lost German. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm Maori. Would you like to read the um, the phrasal verb and the definition? Yes, of course. Uh, run away to leave you unexpectedly. Escape. Example: uh, The dog ran away from home and it has been missing for three days. Uh, um, that phrase means. Uh, you lost your pet uh, for three days. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, great job. So, um, so when your pet leaves <laughs> your house, then you could say uh -huh. it ran away. Um, and you could also use this expression for people. Um, usually for children, when they leave home without permission, you can say that they ran away from home. Um, so maybe I could ask a volunteer, I don't know if any of you would like to give another example of maybe how to use this in a sentence. Uh, when uh, an exotic, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. When an exotic uh, animal run away, uh, it's possible uh, have a problem in the habitat because uh, autochthon species uh, can be damaged. Okay, very good. Nice job. And yeah, that last word is damaged. Very good. So a problem with the habitat could be a cause of an exotic animal to run away. Very, very good. So I wanted to do a quick review with you guys. Um, I don't know if we have just like one minute left, but um, maybe we could all try to use this phrasal verb just to practice using it. Um, so Adela, you gave us an example, so maybe I could ask Amaudi also for an example of runaway in a sentence. Who is the first? You could go first, Amaudi. <laughs> ah, okay. What I need to do, use a runaway or work like yeah. a dog? Yeah, you could use either of them. Mm, okay. Um, I I I lost my dog, and I think uh, he uh, ran away uh, from another park, and I I am looking for him all the time, like a, like a dog. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. You could say I've been working like a dog to find him. Very good. Yeah. I like how you use um, the past tense too. You said he ran away. Very nice. Um, Sven, do you want to give us an example of how to use run away or work like a dog in a sentence? Um, slaves were treated very bad. Uh, they usually had to work like dogs and were too scared to run away. 
Wow, very good. You were able to use both of them. <laughs> Great job, Sven. Awesome. Okay, Alejandro, it's your turn. Would you like to choose one of these to, to use in a sentence? Run away. <clears throat> uh, my friend drinks a lot because he wants run away to of his responsibilities. Okay, that's a very good example. Perfect job. Okay, and Adela, you gave an example already, but would you like to give another one, or are you good? I don't know if you want to give another example, Adela. <laughs> Okay, um, well you guys all did such a good job in class today. We were able to cover a lot of information and um, practice a lot of vocabulary about pets. So you guys all did very, very well. Um, and I'm really happy to get to see, like, hold on, I'm going to turn on my video again. There we go. <laughs> I'm really happy to get to see the students that were in my other class before, like Adela and Alejandro, Almari, and it was really nice to get to meet you too, Sven. I hope I get to see you soon in another class also. But thank you guys so much for coming today. It was fun. Thank you, Chichero. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. I'll see you soon. See you soon.